Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I hope and trust that you are all well. Before I get started, I would like to give a very special shout out to the reform members of Back to Ashes. Samantha Place, Lisa Radford, Ashley Miles, Interscare Wifey, Tina Mead, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Mana Ash, Norman D.W., Chris C. Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's niece. If you would like to become a member of Back to Ashes or would like to buy me a coffee as an extra thank you, all of that information can be found below in the description. Also, to those that have donated to my GoFundMe. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Landlord Horror Stories. Right after this intro an ad will play, I'll read the first story an ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. Side note, these stories will be read numerically, so there will not be a 10 second pause in between each story. Are you ready? Here we go. Number 1. I had a landlord threaten to put my dog to sleep because she came to stand in front of me to protect me from him. He was ranting and raving about some repairs that needed to be done. We'd been there only one night. In our contract, and my dog felt that he was endangering me. She didn't growl, snarl, bark, or act in any way aggressive, yet because she just looked at him. He started screaming he was going to have animal control come confiscate her as a vicious animal. The joke was on him. Animal control knew my girl very well because of my mom. She worked at our local PD and had AC check my Roddy GSD mix out for aggression. Apparently, he tried to claim my dog attacked him and he had the bite marks to prove it. When the AC officer arrived at the landlord's home, there were no marks. And after finding out the situation, the officer made sure the landlord knew the next time he called on my dog would lead to a nuisance ticket for him. I had to watch the yard like a hawk for anything unnatural the rest of the month. Thank goodness for ugly breakups as my girl and I left for a better place. Number 2. The leasing company for the set of apartments I was living in at the time wanted to replace all the door locks. They left me a voicemail asking if they could replace my locks on Saturday. I was out all day Saturday and did not get the message. I got home that day and found out my door key did not work. I then looked closer at my door and saw that the door did not have the same door handle or lock as it did when I left. Since I knew it was past closing time for the leasing office by that point, the only thing I could think to do was hurried to the office and hoped someone was still in. When I got there, the close sign was up, but I saw lights on, so I pounded on the door. I explained, rather loudly and slightly profanely, that they had replaced my door lock without my permission when I was up to date on rent and otherwise complying with all terms of the lease, telling them exactly how out of line as a company they were to have done this and that they had just illegally locked me out of my apartment. They told me it was a mix-up in their work order, and I think the leasing agent turned white and asked if there was anything at all they could do to regain my trust. I told them they could start with a write-up for their maintenance person and a significant discount on rent, because some things you cannot let slide. Number 3 the worst landlady I have ever encountered was in Baltimore. Eva was renting a room only in her house. I was desperate to move out of an ex's place, so I was too eager to sign the lease. I should have taken notice when she asked me to pick her up at the airport so she could meet with me. When I saw the property, it was mentioned that the place needed cleaning and that she would deduct a certain amount if I clean up the place. I moved into my room, which had door damage from the previous tenant. The next day, I woke up cold. There was no heat in the room. I had a heater, but it shorted the connection from the fuse box. I tried to take a shower, but the water was tepid at best. 
Now, I know for a fact that most jurisdictions require landlords to provide hot water and heat. I started to clean as best as I could without any cleaners or equipment. The kitchen was caked with grease and mouse droppings. I also fixed and stained the stairwell. While I was cleaning, Eva would stand over me like an asshole, telling me how to clean, you missed a spot, etc. After alerting Eva about the heat and the water, she reported that she had called the plumber, complaining that if only I could have waited, she could get the ancient boiler working using insurance money. After several times of reminding her of the situation, she left town with nothing fixed. I finally called 311, which is the number you call for code enforcement. In a day, the code enforcement agent came to inspect the property. Because the lease was for one room only, they could only take temperature readings of the bathroom and the bedroom, nothing in the kitchen. They also made note of exterior repairs to the front step railing and a broken window in the living room. They cited Eva with having no hot water, for no heat, and for repairs to two railings and the broken window. I requested that a rent escrow be established. This would mean that I would pay rent to the court, not Eva, who would forward the rent only if she could prove she got everything fixed. Forward today in court. Basically, she hung herself once she opened her mouth. The judge went over the details and asked her if she made the repairs. She started explaining that she was in a car accident. She did this. She did that. Everything but answer the question. The judge got annoyed and said, It's a yes or no question. What will it be? When she replied no, he ruled in favor of rent escrow. Later that night, she came up and said, You invited those people, code enforcement, into my house. I retreated to my room and shut the door. Eva stood outside my bedroom door and started chanting very loudly that God would strike me dead. God should free her from evil. Me. I put on my headphones to drown out her praying. Finally, I'd had enough. I called the cops because she was harassing me and was creepy and antagonistic. When the cops arrived, she opened her mouth again and went on about her car accident, her troubles with the house, with me, etc., they told her that I live there, I pay rent, and I should be allowed to go in the living room and stairway to get to my room. They also told me I could file a restraining order if she was hassling me. That night, she wrote a release from the lease, claiming that I colluded and conspired to instigate her harm and her death. What a flare of drama. This is the break I was looking for. I hightailed it out of there as fast as I could move. My next landlady is a gem and I have lived there for five years. P.S. When I was cleaning up the other bedroom, I found $85 under the rug. Dibs. Number 4 My fiancé and I decided to move in together, so we started looking for places. For some reason, one day when he was working late, his mother had apparently found the perfect place, and texted him. He was miffed, but busy as hell, so he asked me to meet her to just shut her up. So I drive on over. The neighborhood looks a little sketchy, and I mean, I have no problem going to my friend's place on the wrong side of town and hearing gunshots, but this place was super sketchy, sketchy. I saw her car pull up to a tiny little house where three of the tiny houses were so close, only the driveway kept the distance between them. I phoned her, miffed myself because I was working early the next day, and still had post-doc work to finish. She came out with a sketchy dude and they ushered me in. The house was dark, so I tried to flip the lights on. No power. I suggested we come back to look at it during daylight, but the landlord said, Oh, no, no, I have a flashlight right here. Oh, this is strike about 30? But I was trying to be nice. Not necessarily for the landlord's benefit, but the woman was my fiancé's mother. 
He brings in a small flashlight and we can only see what he decides to point the light on. Mother-in-law said something to the effect of, Not bad, huh? I just stayed quiet. If I said anything, it would have been running and screaming. Finally, we finished looking after I told them I had to be up for work in five hours. Yeah, it was that dark. I took the landlord's number, never intending to use it, and left. I get a call from my fiancé about two hours later, asking if the place really was so nice that we had to sign a lease before the end of the night. I ask him what in the hell he was talking about because I would rather build a mud hut. Apparently, his mother had signed his name to a year lease after I left. In order to get out of it, we would have to take the landlord and his mother to court. Proving Fraudulent Signatures and the Landlord's Awareness of Fraudulent Signatures I had a few family members who would have represented us, but at this point, fiancé would have been screwed on multiple levels. So, considering that he had an illegal lease, we went to the landlord first. The landlord just said that he had paperwork that couldn't be disputed, and because it was too dark to take photos when I was there, I had no photographic evidence. The only evidence we had were the what is happening texts. The landlord also let us know how sketchy he was when we were late there. He announced the number of guns he had. So, don't worry about anyone trying to break in. And he pointed to his pit, saying the dog could handle anything we didn't like. He had actively trained the dog to be aggressive to people it didn't know. Beyonce had a pit herself, but the fall asleep thinking he's a lap dog kind of pit. Long story short, this creepy dude said he'd knocked the lease to a six-month lease while his dog got used to us. We finally said, screw it. Six months is just six months. Not worth the heinous amount of court fees and killing the relationship with his mother. Not that it wasn't hit pretty hard anyway. In that six months, the landlord's dog would regularly growl at me in our tiny yard, making fiancé's dog freak out and stand between my legs, all buffed out and forced landlord's dog to submit. They never fought, and if they had tried... I would have had to stop it, even if I had to be the one hurt doing so. Fiancé's dog always just walked outside with me to try to protect me. The stove stopped working. One of the shower heads stopped working, and the floor began to feel unstable. We even caught the landlord's uncle sneaking out of the crawl space with a jug of water once, because his had been cut off. The six months were finally up. We told him we were out of there and found a little brownstone we liked. Not even another six months later, we saw the old landlord on the news, having been caught contributing, making crack, and lighting his girlfriend on fire. Number five. My worst landlord story? <laughs> Here we go. We had been renting an apartment for about seven years and had a couple of rent increases, but it was always just before or just after an upgrade, so we didn't mind. The rental agency was great and responsive, until the owner of the building sold it to some crazy people who wanted to do their own management. We had already put in notice that we were going to be moving out because we had just found a new house, and the notice was given to the old rental company for a few days before old owner sold to the new owner of the building. Because we had been renting for so long, we were just on a month-to-month -month agreement. No big deal. They wanted us to sign another lease. We were already paid through our departure date, so that did not make any sense to us. The woman was obviously hell-bent on getting us out of there. She came by every morning and walked around the apartments looking inside and then opening them, claiming, uh, Oh, I keep forgetting which ones are the empty ones. That was a complete lie, as all of them were occupied. 
She had her child peeing on the walkway outside my apartment one morning and then tried to say the stench was bad and I wasn't cleaning up after my pet. I thought maybe my neighbor's dog had peed outside the apartment, but it was a puppy and very rambunctious, so sometimes it just got excited. It happens. I didn't have a pet, but we will get to how she, the landlord, was caught in her own lie. I came home one evening to see her sneaking out of my back door. I went around the side of the building where I knew she would come out and ask what she was doing or what she was looking for. She said, oh, I was just on your back porch. I didn't go inside or anything. I told her I had just pulled up to the parking lot. Why would she be telling me she didn't go inside? I told her, let's go look at the back door then. It was ajar, and I have those slide locks that I lock every single day before I go to work. The slide had been undone. About a week before we were moving out, we had a friend come and help us move some items. He and my husband were moving a dresser, and my husband tripped down the last step, and the dresser careened into the wall, knocking a huge hole in it. Our friend was a contractor, so was planning to come by a couple days later and fix the hole. I got to work at about five minutes after I got there. She called me and said she would be deducting the cost to fix the hole from our deposit. There was no way she could have known unless she went into the apartment just after I left. I asked her how she even knew about the hole and she started stammering. She said she had evidence that I could not refute and emailed me a video. I was floored. Somehow, she had a video from inside my apartment showing the hole. She shouldn't have even been in there anyway without notice to me, with no emergency. But I asked how she got the video and she admitted that she had gone inside. I showed her my previous lease and statutes from state landlord tenant law that said what she had done was not permissible. She said that where she came from, it was usual to put security measures in properties. I told her I appreciated her concerns, but there would be a problem if I found a camera in my house. She got so red in the face I thought she would burst. I told her she needed to leave immediately, and she said she was calling the police. I told her that was great because then they could search my house for her camera. They arrived about 15 minutes later. I told them I suspected someone had been in my apartment without permission. She contended she was permitted to be there since she was the landlord. I told them she had planted a camera somewhere and was spying on us. They found the three cameras and took them in as evidence of a stalking complaint. They caught her coming into my house no less than 20 times in two weeks and looking through my belongings. One caught her kicking my neighbor's dog. She ended up getting charges for harassment, stalking, and animal cruelty. Her husband tried to keep up the heat with threatening us to keep the deposit. He tried to file eviction papers, but we already were moving out. I decided just to go along with his little game. I went to court and showed our notice given to the previous rental company by certified mail by closing documents for the purchase of our new home, videos of us moving into the new house, videos of every single moment of our moving out of the old place, photographs of every room and everything we cleaned. There were over 400 pictures that I took of every corner, baseboard, cabinet, corners of the back porch, etc., etc. Receipts for the drywall patch where our friend fixed it. Receipts for the paint where we repaired any scuffs. The videos of his wife going into our house as part of the official police report. Not only did we not have to forfeit our deposit, we get treble damages and a restraining order against them. It was glorious. They tried eviction proceedings against two other neighbors who prevailed as well due to video evidence captured of her sneaking around all the time. 
captured on the videos from my apartment and from where she put them in other places around the property. Two more losses in court, and they packed up their stuff on their little Beverly Hillbillies truck and got out of town. Someone else bought the property at tax sale because they never paid the taxes. I do have some friends in the legal community and the local government that kept me informed. And with that, I give you a very special thank you. Number 6. My story followed by a better one from a client. When I was a sophomore in college, I rented a house with seven friends from a landlord who had had many crappy rentals for unwitting college students who didn't know better than to put up with his bullshit. He did not know what a 24-hour notice was and would walk in unannounced, even without knocking. In fact, his method of collecting rent was to barge into tenants' houses or apartments and demand payment to be put in the fridge for him to take when he showed up. He would freak out over any stupid problem with the house that was a shithole to begin with because he trucked an entire house halfway across the state and placed it on an existing foundation of another house that was torn down. When our toilet wouldn't flush because the pipes were filled with roots, he blamed us for putting tampons down the toilets. When we reminded him that it was all guys living here, he screamed that it was from all the parties we were having and girls coming over to flush their tampons down our toilets. But the worst tenant experience I had was a client I represented years later. It was a young family with two young boys and a new baby girl who lived a bit outside of town on an acreage they were renting. It was a horrible place, hardly suitable for living, but they were very poor and didn't have many options. The new landlord had recently purchased the acreage from its original owner, and he decided that he was king of the castle and was going to show the tenants who was the boss. When they were 12 hours late on rent, he barged into the house at midnight with four other men all dressed in ski masks like it was a home invasion and they threw the family out in late November when the temperatures were below freezing. Once he got the family out, he threw everything they owned into trash bags and put the trash bags in a storage shed he owned somewhere. I met them the next day after they spent the night in their car not knowing what to do. You'd think the authorities would have been able to help, but they couldn't since the sheriff, wrongly, decided it was a civil matter rather than criminal. You'd think that once lawyers were involved on both sides, things would be sorted. But they weren't. The landlord was a nutcase who was a federal parole for numerous firearm offenses and who years later thereafter this happened eventually went back to prison for more weapon charges and for pimping his girlfriend out to film a bestiality porno in which a German shepherd had its way with her, which was later played in court. Meth is a hell of a drug, folks, let me tell you. His lawyer only cared that he was paid and they dragged this out for far too long, over a year, and actually made me take the case to trial. Most open and shut cases are settled prior to trial. Fortunately, the judge had a functional brain and I won at trial, but my clients never recovered all that they had lost and were never fully compensated for this horrible string of events. Of course, I wasn't paid either, but it was still one of my more valuable experiences in my legal career. Number 7 when we were moving out, our landlady did a walkthrough and agreed in writing that there was no damage to our property and we would be getting all of our deposit back. She took custody of our keys and then walked us out of the building. Unfortunately, two weeks later, we got a letter stating that she was keeping all of the security deposit. Apparently, someone had become inebriated, destroyed a screen in the window, gouged a hole in the wall and dented the refrigerator. This occurred two days after we had moved out. Turns out our landlady used the property as a place for her in-laws to stay during Thanksgiving 
and she fully expected us to pay for their damages because our name was still on the lease. The judge was really hung up on why other occupants would be in our apartment without our knowledge or consent if the landlady's position was that it was still our apartment and therefore our liability. Number 8. When we first rented our place, the landlord and his wife seemed like the nicest couple in the world. They even invited us to dinner and we had a great time. Three months in, we found out that they argued quite loudly and cursed like truckers. Not that big of a deal to us, though. Then, my wife stepped on a piece of blue glass on our kitchen floor, which was strange as we didn't own any blue glasses. Suddenly, I remembered that dinner we went to at their place, and they had blue glasses on the table. I decided to set up a camera in our living room, and over the next week, I caught this guy coming into our apartment when we weren't home. But that's not the worst part. That pervert was going through our dressers and playing with my wife's underwear. I caught him red-handed, gave him a nice beating, and called the law enforcement. He tried to play it off by saying that he smelled smoke and wanted to investigate. That's when I played back the previous week's videos of him visiting on three separate occasions. They locked him up and we quickly found a new place and never looked back. Number 9. While I was deployed, my wife remained at our home in Texas. One day in the middle of summer, the air conditioning broke, and the landlord told her that the temperature wasn't hot enough to require the repair. When she showed him pictures of the thermostat reading over 38 Celsius, or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, indoors, he finally said that he would send someone. What a relief, right? Well, apparently I needed to be there, because I was the primary name on the lease. Since that was not an option, I threatened to sue, and the AC was eventually jerry-rigged, just as summer was ending. Also, the repair guy told my wife that he was paid to do the bare minimum fix. Two bad things didn't end there. Fast forward to when I'm back home. It starts getting hot and the AC breaks again. The landlord gave us the same story as before, claiming it wasn't hot enough. This dragged on until I finally had orders to move to a new duty station. We gave our 30 days notice and moved out. The landlord tried to tell me that I had to pay to fix the AC or I wouldn't get my deposit back. I once again threatened to sue, and this time I contacted the actual owner of the house. I couldn't believe his reaction. He was a cool dude living in New York and said he'd take care of it for me. He flew all the way to Texas, fired the landlords, and sued them himself, and said I was actually the cleanest and most respectable tenants he's had. He even paid me double my deposit for my troubles. What a very, very nice guy. Number 10. This happened at my first apartment out of college. When I toured the place, it was filthy, but I could tell it would be pretty sweet when cleaned up. The landlord explained that it was so messy because it had been occupied by an older man with health issues. That was understandable. The landlord assured me he'd get it cleaned up before I moved in, which sounded good to me. Red flag number one. On move-in day, it was pretty clear that nothing had been done with the place. It took me and my poor sweet grandma two days of scrubbing to get everything clean. After about a week, everything was really looking good. One day, however, I was putting stuff away in the cabinet and I made a very disturbing discovery. I found some bed bug spray that had never been opened. At this point, I started to get nervous, but I had been there for a week and hadn't felt or seen any bugs, so everything should be fine, right? Wrong. What followed was the most miserable two months of my life. 
I was constantly fighting with the landlord over taking care of what was an increasingly worsening bed bug issue. First, he told me he would be fumigating, but the next day I found the same cans from Target that I had found earlier. Every night I would go to bed crying because I could feel the bugs all over me, crawling on me, biting me, making me feel absolutely disgusting. I was a basket case on zero sleep and the landlord was doing absolutely nothing about it. I wished I could say I sued him. I should have, but I had nothing left in the tank. I would spend my nights at the laundromat, scratching myself raw with a crazed look in my eye. I finally made it back home to my parents and spent the next two months still filling the bugs all over me. I was scared sick to death that I had carried this nightmare into their home too. Number 11. Boy do I have a story. The apartment we lived in had a sewer issue that caused the apartments on the first floor to flood with sewer water. This happened to us multiple times. Some were more damaged than others. We complained, complained, and complained some more. But the owner wouldn't admit to it, so nothing ever got done. At one point, the people across the hall from us lost everything. Then, a month ago, the sewer backed up so badly that it flooded our bedroom, living room, and kitchen with disgusting poop water. There was poop all over the floor, and one apartment even had ham bones come up through their toilet. We were all losing our damn minds. At this point, we demanded to have everything professionally cleaned. The owner said no and told us he was going to have his usual cleaner wash it with bleach. My boyfriend decided to call the health inspector who condemned our apartment and another one on our floor. And then he demanded that the owner get an actual cleaning service in there. The owner ordered us to move out immediately, and when we said we had until the end of the month, he proceeded to convince everyone who worked at our building to try to kick us out. When we were leaving, we were shocked to find that the people across the hall from us were still sleeping on their sewer-drenched mattress. My boyfriend and I gave them our clean mattress before we left. Number 12 I was a bit behind with the rent one time due to some health problems with a family member. So, when I wasn't home, my landlord came into my apartment and ripped everything out and put it out on the street. Did I mention that I was only six days late with the rent? I was in college at the time and lived on a road bordering the campus. That night, my peers, neighbors, and random people driving down that road got free access to all of my possessions. But I got my revenge. Long story short, I sued the landlord and won. He tried to keep it a secret from his wife early in the litigation process, but in the end, the check my lawyer got from their lawyer was signed by his wife. So, screw you, Dale. Number 13. One Friday I came home from school, walked into my only bathroom, and found the roof of the building more or less filling the room. Workers had been re-roofing the complex, and either someone fell through my ceiling or the roof had just collapsed. I never did get a straight answer as to which. The bathroom was unusable, and no one thought to inform me of this fact or make arrangements. A gaping one meter wide, or three foot wide, hole was open to the sky making me feel very uncomfortable about leaving my possessions in the apartment while I went elsewhere. Also, the person who fell in must have walked around looking at things or someone else came in later to assess the damage and drag the dusty, nasty contents of the attic through my apartment on their shoes. The rental office didn't normally open till 1 p.m. on Saturdays, and, as was often the case, it didn't open at all this weekend because the manager was out of town. 
I left multiple messages on the answering machine and with the service, but they were ignored. I ended up loading my valuables into my car and driving to a relative's place for the weekend. The final straw happened that Monday when the manager eventually got around to returning my calls. And it was pretty frustrating. He just said, Oh, right, we'll try and get that fixed this week. He had no sense of urgency, no apology, no explanation, and no offer of recompense. Obviously, I moved out of that dump shortly thereafter. Number 14. My significant other and I were renting a room from a 72-year-old woman. She was very passive-aggressive and made terrible life decisions. That is, she married a 32-year-old man and cashed in her entire 401k to buy him a Corvette, only to get divorced six months later. Despite all of that, her home was beautiful and the rent was a bargain. She ended up kicking us out because I would not sign a legally binding document that would allow her to treat my significant other as a literal housekeeper for zero pay. I told her that we would only clean up after ourselves and that we would be seeking a new apartment immediately. She did not like this plot twist. Our landlady went absolutely insane with rage. She called the law enforcement and faked a heart attack. But that's not the craziest part. Some of the best quotes from this incident came from the first responders. The EMT who was checking her for a heart attack said, Ma'am, your vitals are perfectly fine. There's no sign that you're having a heart attack. And then the officer said to her, Ma'am, we can't arrest them just for hurting your feelings. Number 14. For some reason, our former landlord would rent to wealthy foreign exchange students attending the local community college, and he would let them do whatever they wanted. We had a group of five of them living below us, and it was total chaos. They would blast music nonstop and would have insane parties that lasted until 6 a.m. on weekdays. During these crazy parties, they would puke and pee off the front porch. Expensive vehicles from out of state would pull in and park for like 10 minutes while one of the passengers would run into the house. It is my guess that they were definitely doing something shady. They would often leave several bags of trash on their porch in the hot sun for days. Whenever we would try to talk to the students about our issues with their behavior, they would just shrug and say, I, 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 I don't, I don't care, in broken English. We even filed several complaints to the landlord citing the specific lease clauses as well as the local laws that they were breaking with evidence and he would do nothing. In desperation, we did some searching and found the name of the regional manager who worked for the property company. We filed a formal complaint and turned over everything we had. The property company eventually evicted them, but it took about nine months from when they moved in until the sweet day I saw the sheriff serving them. Number 15 my girlfriend and I have been renting the house we live in for a little over a year now. Last summer, the landlord came to our place and stayed in a blocked off area next to our kitchen for 10 days. I get that it's her house and everything, but that doesn't mean she can use it as her vacation property while we are living there. To make matters worse, she's quite the hoarder. She keeps loads of useless stuff in the basement, so we essentially have zero storage space. Also, during the summer that we moved in, she had a bathroom installed in the basement by some shady contractor. A few days into the bathroom installation, there was an electrical fire in the basement at 2 a.m. The water pump seized up and the breaker never tripped, which filled the entire house with smoke. On top of that, the smoke alarms didn't go off because the batteries had been put in backward by the last guy who lived there. Granted, I should have checked those, but 
We had only been living there for a few weeks. Luckily, our dog woke us up. Anyway, the fire department found scorched wires near a soldered pipe and said that was probably what caused everything. So I texted the landlord to let her know what had happened, and she called me asking if her stuff in the basement was damaged. She never even asked if we were okay. This weekend, she's coming to stay for another 10 days. And God, are we dreading it. Number 16. My landlord knew I was a clean and quiet tenant who loved baking. He decided to renovate my apartment and remove the stove while moving the cupboards, sink, and fridge to the other wall. I couldn't believe it when he replaced my stove with a toaster oven. He also removed my living room door. He then increased my rent by 30% for these renovations. We've been in hearings ever since, and now he's trying to keep my damage deposit out of spite because I hung shelves. There was no storage in the bathroom. Curtains to cover a huge window right by the toilet which faces a busy street. And a few pictures. The neighbors upstairs flooded three apartments and still got to keep their deposit. Number 17. My significant other and I were looking for a place together. We finally found a one-bedroom apartment, but I had a really bad gut feeling about it. I decided to ignore it, however, since we had been looking for a place for close to three months and just wanted the search to be over. We signed the lease, got the keys, and started moving our boxes in. Surprise, we've got roaches. We called the landlord about the infestation, and he cheerfully said, Oh, yeah, <laughs> well, this is a city, so there are no roaches. I really chewed him out because this was not a roach or two, but thousands and they were everywhere. Even the molding on the ceiling was caked with roach filth. Unfortunately, we didn't notice it during the walkthrough, but upon closer inspection, it was evident that the roaches had been there for a long time. I couldn't believe that the couple before us had even been living in this filth for two years. After I complained and told the landlord that we were leaving, we had to deal with six days of utterly vile behavior. At one point, the landlord's wife called me late at night in hysterics. She kept asking why I was such an awful person for breaking the lease and moving out of their roach motel. There was a lot of screaming involved. I essentially told them to screw themselves for knowingly letting us move into their total dump of an apartment. Over the six days that my boyfriend and I were there, we did not clean up any of the roaches we squashed. When it was time for the landlord to come and collect the keys, there were hundreds of roach bodies covering the floor. They were literally everywhere. The landlord took a quick look-see, shrugged and said, It's not that bad. I despise slumlords. Most of them operate without a license, and many of their properties are truly revolting biohazards. What seconds me most of all this? That this landlord had children. I even asked him, how would you feel about your daughter living in these conditions? Of course, he wasn't able to give me an answer. Number 18. So... I rented a house for $900 a month with heat included, thinking it was a steal. My landlord lives right next door and there is like an acre between us. I found out why it was so cheap. My landlord is a nutcase. She had problems with previous tenants and swore it was all his fault. And if I was a good tenant, I'd never hear from her. On his way out the door, he said he didn't have to move, but his family wanted him to, but by then it was too late. 
Three weeks before I moved in and after I had given notice, losing my waterfront apartment with an amazing harbor view, she doubled my rent. She told me heat was included, but neglected to mention entire lower level electricity heated, so oil heat was only included for the top floor. She expected me to keep my electric heat on year-round to keep dampness out of the house. She contacted me at 2.45 a.m. when I got up in the middle of the night, turning the lights on to pee, wanting to know what was going on, using the excuse that because I'm 45, I might have had a heart attack and she didn't want me dying in her house. Contacted me repeatedly at 6.45 a.m. when oil was being delivered because she didn't recognize the truck and thought I had done something stupid and it was a fire truck and I was burning her house down. When a platonic friend came over three Saturdays in a row because we were finishing off a TV series together, he never stayed the night and was gone by midnight. I was questioned on whether or not he had moved in. The two weeks over the Christmas holidays, she showed up or contacted me six times, including wanting to do a house inspection five days before Christmas and three days before Christmas called to do a mental health check on me because she, a parole officer, was doing it on her clients and included me on the list of her parolees. I'm an officer with the federal government, not an ex-con. She showed up when I was on an actual date and played helpless as a teen to fix a piece of siding, getting both me and my date to help out in the dark. In the freezing cold, using my tools to be a use she never brought any then made all kinds of sexual innuendos about me and my date making the whole thing awkward. When neighbors have been neighborly, having irrelevant conversation, she'd rush to my house after to find out what we talked about because they are nosy. She's contacted me at work to ask if her sister's been around because she's worried. She's peeping in my windows, so I had to put up a surveillance camera. She's contacted me at work because same sister thought she saw previous tenants drive down the street and wanted to make sure I was letting them. Someone I don't know. In for visits. After Christmas, I was so stressed out, feeling a bit stalked, I got put on anti-anxiety medications. I had a bad acting reaction to them. She showed up with no notice at 7.30 asking me rudely, What's wrong with your face? I responded I was having an allergic reaction. She wanted to know the name of my medication. I honestly could not remember the name, but said it was for anxiety. She asked me if I'm on crack. I didn't know what to say because I was shocked she could be so ignorant and rude to somebody who has to go through criminal record checks and credit checks just to hold down her job. I've been asked if I'm a drug dealer because I can afford a decent car and rent a house by myself. The place was left a mess by the previous tenant. I spent almost $100 getting rid of the bugs and at least another $60 on cleaning supplies and every time she picks up the rent, she has the nerve to ask me if I'm keeping the place I've cleaned clean. I got some email from the tenants she told me she got along great with for three years and contacted them via Facebook to see how they managed in. They feel like they have PTSD from living here. There have been much more. I have 17 pages of incidents with dates that totally cross the line, both ethically and legally. It took a whole year to be able to afford to move again, but I'm out next weekend. Woohoo. I've been told by the tenancy board I can take her for a couple thousand due to misleading me about the heat and lease violations. But I've already been put through too much stress by someone who shouldn't be allowed to rent. I'm just moving, but all is documented and recorded. 
if next tenant wants to take her on and can track me down, I'll go to bat for them. After I get my damage deposit back. Number 19. Last November, I got a knock on the door from my newly renovated basement apartment. It was the fire department telling me that I'm living in an unauthorized unit and will be evicted in three months if the landlord doesn't get the place up to code. The landlord kicked me and my girlfriend out in February saying it would take just two weeks but will say three to be safe. I ask if I had to move out my furniture and he says, nah, they'll just work around it. I then spent seven weeks living in my buddy's basement, 30 minutes away, paying rent there and commuting to work. Finally in April, the landlord said the place looks great and gave me the okay to move back in. I was in for a major shock. The entire apartment was filthy. Thick drywall dust covered every surface. There were paint cans, tools, and garbage in every corner, and paint was splattered on the floor, windows, and all of my furniture, including my mattress. My wooden furniture had been scratched up, and my shoe rack and shower curtain were destroyed. I argued with the landlord for days. He finally gave me $150 for cleaning and damages, but then he upped the rent by $100 a month, because the apartment is much better now. Number 20. I never actually met my landlord, but he was about as shady as they come. We complained about a ton of broken things that he never fixed. Being college kids, we decided to try the free counsel our university offered in the hope that they might have some opinions for us. Our lawyer was pretty shocked by what he found out. Apparently, the house we were renting had been foreclosed two months prior, and now the bank owned it. We were so infuriated about this news that we decided to stop paying rent to the sleazeball while we got everything in order. About six weeks later, he stormed into the house furious that we hadn't paid rent in over a month. My roommate stared at him and said, We aren't paying you anymore, so get off this property now. This angered him even more and he started threatening my roommate. Finally, my roommate said, We know you don't own this place anymore and we're going to sue you for the money you took from us. The landlord then shut up at this point and took off, never to be heard from again. Although we actually couldn't afford to sue him, we did make a sweet deal with the bank. We were able to pay the same amount of rent so that we could stay until graduation. The bank even fixed a few of the big issues since they were going to sell the house anyway. We got to enjoy our last few months of college without an awful landlord. Number 21 my landlord decided to replace the roof of my apartment building during finals week in college. Instead of hiring professional roofers, he just had the building's maintenance workers do it. I live on the top floor, and it honestly sounded like some fat guy was repeatedly jumping up and down on my ceiling while I was trying to sleep and study. This went on for eight hours each day for an entire week. I called the landlord twice because chunks of drywall were falling out of the ceiling and I didn't want to be blamed for it. By the end of the week, I counted nine nails that they had somehow managed to pound right through the ceiling. I could see the points poking through and pieces of drywall had started to crumble off around them. If they had only waited to fix the roof just one week later, no one would have been on campus because it would have been summer vacation. In any case, I'm glad that nightmare is finally over. Number 22. 
my landlady found out that I was a renovation specialist with a lot of experience in historic renovation and water, fire, storm damage. So she asked if I would do little odds and ends around the place to fix it up, and I agreed. She would either pay for the materials I needed or she would deduct the cost of them from my rent. I did a lot for her. For one job, I replaced all of the doorknobs with new knobs. Each door took about six hours to complete because I had to file, sand, paint, and reset each new knob. I also replaced and finished the front door, refinished the concrete floor in the laundry room, did some rewiring, repaired walls, and repainted the whole place. In the kitchen, I hung new cabinets and installed a dishwasher after adjusting the layout to accommodate it. When I moved in, the house sat empty for a year because it was in such rough shape. When I moved out, the place was awesome. So nice, in fact, that my landlady was able to charge $300 more per month than I had paid. After I left, she was able to rent out my place in just four days. A few weeks later, I started to wonder where my deposit was since I should definitely have been getting it back. Nope. Instead, I got a letter saying that she was keeping it for some ridiculous list of reasons. Well, I got the last laugh. So I took her to court and her argument was basically that this is how she makes her money. The judge looked like he was holding back laughter as he ruled in my favor. Number 23 I used to get medication shipped to me for a medical issue. It was a self-administered shot with a spring-loaded needle casing, and I had a safe disposal method all set up. Each month, the little colors of medicine were delivered to the main office of my apartment building, and for the first year, everything went smoothly. Unfortunately, my building was sold and there was a new person running the place. When I went to pick up my meds for the first time after the sale, I went to the office as I always did and I was in for a shock. The previous people would always just pop my package into a fridge in the office. That was set up for me. This woman did not. Even though there was a massive refrigerate upon delivery sticker on my package, this woman chose to leave it in the sweltering hot back room instead. It was pretty inconsiderate, but I could deal with it. Then, when she was passing me the box, she did the thing where she mimed like she was handing it to me and then yanked it back when I reached for it. She said, huh? Are these your needles? Are you having needles delivered? And I said, That's none of your business. Give me my medication. She kept holding on to it and said, Well, some of the neighbors are concerned because of the needles. I knew this was a lie as my neighbors have never even seen my needles. And they have no clue that this is even something I need. Yet again, I told her that this wasn't any of her business. She finally gave me the box, but every time I received my medication after that, she would just give me major stink eye. I once had a landlord scream in my face because in our contract, he had agreed to remediate the mold in our bathroom. I moved in and the mold was still there. He flat out said he had no intention of doing anything about it. So I told him that I had no intention of paying rent until it was addressed. I then referred him to the relevant section of my state housing code. For some reason, the jerk had the nerve to act like I was being the unreasonable one for expecting him to follow through on what he agreed to do verbally with a handshake. And... In writing. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true landlord horror stories. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you kindly. 
If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed these horrific collection. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Much love, light, and peace to you all. Have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night.